Hey guys, it's May May, and it's that time of year. It's time for us to start getting organized and ready for our crafting for next year. Well, as you know, my Sunday videos that I do with you guys, we're going to be encouraging people to send out cards this year a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and get myself prepped because I want to send out a lot of cards. So in the month of January, I'm going to be focusing on a lot of getting ready for your year to send cards out to everybody so that you don't miss. Because if you're a card maker, that's what we want to do is send our cards out. So here's what we're going to be doing. This is one of those mini um, magazine holders. You've seen these before. There's nothing new here. There's a couple of things I did to make it a little different for me, and I wanted to share it with you guys just to see what you think, and this might help you in your organizing. Now, I'm going to bring you some other organizing ideas because I've got a bunch of other ones in my head, so I'm going to bring you those too, but for now, we're going to start with this one. And now, before we get started, I just want to point this out. It's a tiny bit different than some I've seen online, but only because I wanted it to work for me, and I'll show you how that is. This is 17 A2 size cards. I could easily put 20 or even more in there. I don't want to put too many because I don't want to bulge it out, but I did double enforce this to help that. And I won't be putting my envelopes in here because I plan to make separate ones of these for envelopes because I'm going to have multicolored envelopes. And this will fit on a bookshelf. It'll be really cute. All right, so here, let's make it. We are going to be making these score marks. Okay, so I've got the top ones and the bottom ones. On my blog, I'm going to have a photo of this for you so you can see what this should look like. And I'll have all the dimensions for you, but I wanted to show you kind of what we're going to be doing so it would make a little more sense as I go along. All right, so using a 12 by 12 piece of paper. That's one thing that I did different from what I saw in the online. Somebody may have done one, but for me, when I was doing my research, most people were cutting this paper down a little bit. I decided I didn't want to cut it down because I wanted to use all of the space that I could so I could make cards all year and put in here for my storage. So here's your first score mark, four and a half. Now, again, I want to make this guy three and a half inches wide, so I score at four and a half. I'm going to come over three and a half inches and score at seven and a half. So this is the section where my cards will stay. Now, I'm going to turn it in my scoreboard. I want this guy to be six inches tall, which is slightly taller than an A2 size card. Okay, five and a half is an A2 size height, so this gets me taller. And then I'm going to come out here and I'm going to build the base where the cards will stand up. And I need it to be at least four and a quarter, so I'm going to go a little bit wider than that. And we're going to um, have a little bit of ease, so we're going to score this at ten and a half. Okay, so that's your big score marks here, six and ten and a half. And on this side four and a half and seven and a half. Now, we're gonna cut this little angle and you can get fancy. You don't have to do a straight line. You can do any old shape you want over here. If you want it to curve like this, cut yourself out a template, use it to trace on, cut it out, and then just use it for all of them so you have the same shape on each one. But for me, I'm okay with this. You're not gonna see this anyway on my bookshelf, that'll be hidden. So I'm just doing the angle. So here's how we get it. With our middle piece, this is that first piece we scored right here, our four and a half inch mark and our seven and a half inch mark. I'm gonna come back an inch from four and a half, which that gets me three and a half. And I'm just making a mark with my scoring tool right at the top to let me know that's my mark. But if you need to use a pencil or a pen, matter of fact, for a video, I'll use a pencil right there and just make a little pencil mark, okay? Then I'm gonna come out from the seven and a half inch an inch and we'll make another mark at eight and a half. So that's my one inch marks. Now I'm gonna turn this guy. From this six inch piece, I want to come back up the same height. This height is an inch and a half, okay? So from the six inch, I'm gonna go back an inch and a half, which will put me at four and a half. Again, these measurements will be on the blog for you, okay? And then I'm gonna turn this page around and this time I need to mark it this way because this is the top of the box. So I'm gonna come an inch and a half out. Don't stress, I'll have all these measurements for you. But what you'll end up with at the top of the page will be this, okay? So these were the marks we're making, one here and one here, one here and one here. If you put it in your head like that, it'll kind of help. All right, then I'm just gonna take this to my scoreboard. I'm not cutting this away. I have found every way I can to reinforce this box to make it sturdy without having to use chipboard. But if you wanted to do this in chipboard, you certainly could do this in chipboard. You just wanna cut the pieces individual and then put them together with like little binder pieces. But I have made this as sturdy as I can with just cardstock so that I can do this with just what's in my stash. Okay, so I'm putting my scoreboard away. I think I'm through with it at least for now. 
and I can start to assemble. The first thing I want to do is I want to fold and crease all of the lines. I found that this was better to do this here than to wait and do it later because we need everything folded and creased for what we're fixing to do. Again, I'm gonna be bringing you some different storage ideas. I don't know exactly which one I'm gonna land on. I like the idea of this one, but when I do my other ideas, I may like them better. But I thought for this month, I would just give you a bunch of different ideas and let you decide which one you like. On my channel already, I have some ideas from previous years, and I thought I would link those as well. So if you might wanna go ahead and use one of those ideas, you'll have those. But I got some other things in mind. All right, so I folded all of the lines except for these guys. I can do those later. Now I need to make some slices. I'm gonna use my big long scissors. You can use whatever you got, or you can even use your trimmer. And on the six inch score line right here in the middle, I'm gonna slice to the first score. So when it meets that first crossover right here, okay? Same thing here. I'm gonna take this score line and I'm gonna slice it up to the first place it crosses over. And I'm actually slicing in the ditch. You know, I've told you guys this before, you can slice above or below a score line. I'm slicing in the score line. So I'm laying my scissors right into the score line and slicing. Again, these blunt edges that we're leaving are gonna help with stability. You'll see why later. I'm not taking any of the bulk out with the angle cuts on purpose. Cause that's just the way paper is. The more blunt it is, the more stable it will be. Okay, so there's my cuts I need to make. Now these two pieces here don't need to stay this long, but I don't want to lose any of this material because this is for stability, okay? So we're gonna pick this piece up in the middle and I'm gonna bring this edge over and I'm gonna fold it right at the score line without going over, okay? So I'm basically folding this little flap in half, but right here I wanna bring it to the score line without going over, because this needs to stand up. And see how easy that sit up without any resistance? If I fold it over too far, I get pushed back and we don't want that. So there's one side, let's do the other. Right to the score line. You can score this in half if you want to on your scoreboard. I don't find that I need to, I just crease it down really nice and tight. And then again, no resistance. They'll just fold up nice and easy. Okay, so there's number one. Now we can start to assemble this dude. So in the same idea of not losing any of my stability, I am keeping these two flaps and not cutting them away, and I'm gonna use them to help me build the structure, okay? So on the side of one, on the outside of it, I'm gonna add some of my glue. I'm gonna use my art glitter glue here, and I'm going to run it pretty heavily across the middle. Not like a thick bead, but I'm using a lot. I'm scratching that page with the art glitter glue, and then this is going to get glued right to that piece on the side. So I've lifted it up. Let me lay it down like this, maybe that'll help. Or maybe not, I've lifted it up and glued it into place. Let me get it where you can see it. We'll go back here. This is that piece we folded to the score mark and I just glued that in and this piece is gonna get glued in here in just a second. Now what I wanna do is I wanna cover this with glue and fold it over and we're gonna sandwich that flap inside so these side panels, by the time we get done, will be four pieces of cardstock thick right here. How is that? We've got one, two, the flat we just did, and three, the one we're folding over now. And what I found is best is to pick this guy up and lay it on its side and squish that down into place. And I even use my bone folder and rub it down really good to get it nice and flat. So now, with the sandwich of that little flap at the front, we now have a three piece thick for the most part. The very top is not three, but it'll be fine. All right, let's do this side and see if you can see this one better now that I've got that out of the way. All right, I'm gonna put glue on the outside of this flap, just like so. Bring one piece up and grab it. And I do like to lay it over and push it down into place and just line everything up. Okay, then this flap, I'm gonna put glue on the inside of this flap and we're gonna sandwich that piece in just for stability. Now I'm thinking of making one of these for six by six and five by seven and all different sizes. So if you'd like to see that, let me know if you're a person that makes a six by six card or a five by seven, because I like to make some six by six and I think it'd be nice to have them you know, stored right alongside everything else too. 
All right, for our side pieces, remember I told you I didn't cut these little pieces away? Here's why. I'm gonna fold these over and they're gonna help with stability and they're also gonna help with durability because this edge is gonna be doubled instead of singled, okay? So I'm gonna put glue inside of this triangle shape just like this and then fold this over. And you should clear your fold just fine. You shouldn't have any issue with it wrapping over your fold. If you do, just trim it off right there. But that really helps this edge to be sturdier. Same thing here. You'll be surprised how sturdy this little thing is when you get done. It's not flimsy by no means. Put some glue in there. And close that down. And again, just crease the edge nice and firm. Okay, now, some of the boxes I've seen leave this piece on the outside. So when they close it up, they take both of the pieces here and they put them to the inside and glue it like this. And you are more than welcome to do that. It's perfectly fine, there's nothing wrong with it. I just decided I didn't wanna to have to cut a separate piece to mat it. And I didn't want any bulk between them because they're gonna be sliding in and out together. Probably wouldn't matter either way, but I'm gonna show you how I did it. So I took this and instead of gluing it on the inside, I'm gonna glue it on the outside like so. All right, just like this. So I'm gonna take some glue to this side, run my glue around. And you see how we're overlapping all of this cardstock and see how sturdy we're making it? It really will help when you're done because you'll have so many layers and layers of cardstock that it's gonna feel nice and thick. And now here, you will just see me do this one like this. The only thing, and I'm gonna avoid this little edge right there. See how I did my glue like that? I'll show you. There's one place that I'm gonna trim away that you don't even have to, but I decided I didn't care for it. So I'm gonna trim that little piece away and I'll show you how. So this little piece right here that I don't really need, and because of the way I'm gonna cover my box with another piece of cardstock, I didn't wanna do this measurement. So I literally just took my scissors and snipped it away. So just starting here and snip. It just goes away, it's no big deal. Same thing on this side, snip that away. And then, we're pretty smooth, it's not the worst. I'm not gonna stress about that little piece. And we're gonna cover the box. So see, it's pretty sturdy. The only thing that's not sturdy at all is the front pieces, but guess what? We're fixing to layer those with cardstock too, so they're gonna be fine. All right, let's work on our cardstock. So you're gonna start with a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, whatever you wanna cover your piece with. And I'm cutting this in half at six inches, okay? Then we're gonna cut this piece down and we're gonna get all the pieces we need to cover this out of this one piece. All right, so here's how it's gonna work. So six inches tall, we're gonna cut a four and a half inch piece here. So six by four and a half. Then we're gonna cut six by four and a half here. And this piece is gonna be just enough to cover the back. And it's gonna be perfect for there. See that? Good deal. Okay, now it's time to cut the paper that's gonna cover this piece. So we cut it down already to four and a half by six, so it's just enough for the height and the width, but we need to cut that angle piece in. And let me show you how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna let my trimmer help me and a pencil. So I'm going to take this piece of paper and to this side of my trimmer where the one inch mark is, I'm gonna lay my paper at that one inch section or the one inch mark. Then I'm gonna take my pencil and where the cut blade would go, I'm gonna make a mark. So basically I've just measured in one inch, all right? Then down here, I need this piece to come up an inch and a half from the bottom. So I'm gonna put this in my trimmer at the inch and a half and where my blade would go, make a mark, just instead of cutting. Then I'm just going to take these guys. Now here's where it can get confusing, but I think if you watch for a second, it'll make sense. So this piece is gonna go on the top here. This piece is gonna go on the other side, but I'm gonna to need to flip it so that my pattern matches. So I'm gonna lay this in like this. So I've got pattern and pattern. So that way, when I put it onto my little box, both patterns will be facing the right way. Then I'm gonna take this guy and where I made my mark with them stacked on top of each other, I'm gonna line it up into my trimmer, just like this, and make that slice. And that gives me the pieces that I need 
for both sides and they're angled correctly and the patterns are cut in the right direction. Okay. Now I told you I was gonna get all I need from this one piece of paper. Here's the wedge that we had left over from making those little side panels. This piece is not gonna get me exactly what I need to make this three inches and one and a half inch tall. So I'm gonna make it one and a quarter tall by three inches. Here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna to go to the one and a quarter inch mark on my trimmer, which is right here. And these trimmers have lines that go all the way down. So I'm gonna line this up on that one and a quarter inch mark and make a slice. Basically, I'm just gonna make an even piece of paper on two sides. Then at the point, I'm gonna make this a straight edge on this side, going to the closest part end of that point. You see what I'm saying? I cut that away at the furthest part end. So now I have a, a square on one side. I'm gonna turn this guy around and I'm gonna go out to three inches and I'm just gonna get three inch by one and a quarter out of that. And I didn't have to cut another piece of designer paper for this. That was kind of the point. I didn't have another piece of that pattern um, for this and I didn't wanna waste another piece just to get this size. All right, so let's start to glue everything on. Now, one thing about this piece, it's not gonna go all the way to the top. It's gonna have a little bit of a gap at the top, but that's gonna be covered in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna add some glue. You can also center it, which is what I did on this one. Let me show you. I centered it in the middle, but because I put this piece over, it really just kind of looks like I missed it. So I'm gonna slide it down to the bottom. You do you though. If you want it to be centered, you do that. Whatever makes you happy. <clears throat> put some glue here. And then I'm just gonna line this up on the bottom with this guy sitting down on my work surface. So I get the bottom nice and lined up and then glue that into place. Then we'll do the sides. This one here. And I'm gonna tell you, we're human and we're cutting paper and we're not gonna get perfect cuts every time. And when you're covering something like this where it's almost perfect, where you're trying to cover every single edge, it's not gonna be perfect. Please don't stress about that. This is gonna be fun for you to create. It's gonna be fun for you to use and you don't have to be perfect. So if there's a little bit of blue showing at the top, just like mine is, I'm not gonna stress. And if it's not exactly perfect on the side, I'm not gonna stress. It'll still do its job and it'll still be cute in my craft room. I hope you guys can adopt that motto this year. We're not gonna stress, we're gonna make and have fun and we're just not gonna stress about it. It's got to be fun or you won't wanna do it. And if you put so much pressure on yourself um, to get something so perfect, you just won't do it. And what's the fun in that? Well, you can always still buy supplies, but they're not as fun if you don't use them. <laughs> all right, so get that side glued on and then we're just gonna glue the back. Again, all of these pieces being glued on are really helping it be so stable. That's another reason I cut my pieces the exact size of the box instead of leaving like a little um, matte edge like sometimes we will where you know we won't go all the way to the edge. Another reason I did that is for stability because I wanted this to be super strong to last me all year and even longer really. So if you don't care if it's extremely sturdy like this, you technically could just make it out of designer paper but I just wanted it to be nice and sturdy. So look at there, super cute, nice and sturdy. And on the front, I wanna put a little tag to show me what cards are gonna go in here. So here's how I did that. So from the other diagonal flap, this is another piece I cut an inch and a quarter by three, just like before. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a border punch, just cause I think this will be cute. And I'm gonna punch one edge of this with a little frilly border punch. You can use whatever you got in your stash to do this. You could even use coordinating paper if you didn't want to use exactly the same. I'm actually going to use the other side of the paper for this part. So instead of the piece we used to cover it, I'm going to use this side. At the top of this, I'm going to score it at one quarter of an inch. Let me get my little scoreboard so it doesn't take up quite as much room. So I'm just going to lay this into here. And I'm just, actually I think I'm just going to make a tiny score, just like an eighth of an inch. Again, not wanting to waste paper. So this is gonna be just enough for me to glue that on to the top, just like so, and I can still stamp it. So I'm using the stamps that I have called All Occasions, which literally is as many occasions as you might need for cards this year. And I think this will be fun. What I'm gonna do is make a section for each one of those stamps. And then even if I use that stamp or not, as long as it fits that topic, it can go in that section. So this is just a little note. That way, if I just wanna make some cards and leave them blank, which I tend to do a lot, it'll work. All right, so just a little note and stamp that on, just like so. 
let that dry for a second and we'll glue it in place. So using that little flap I did, I'm gonna put a little glue on that flap, that little eight inch flap, and I'm gonna lay this over the edge of the piece and slide it into place and glue it on. Now I'm not gluing it down all the way and I'll show you why. I'm only gluing the little flap down and the reason is I want this to be loose so that whenever I put these in, and I made this one a little longer, let me tell you what happened. This was my um, prototype. And so I had a lot of little scraps of this paper, but I decided that I didn't want to cut another piece for you guys because this is literally made with one and a half pieces of 12 by 12. We used half of a piece of 12 by 12 to cover it and get this, and this is one piece. But if you want to make them longer or if you need them bigger for a stamp, you can adjust this for whatever you need and just use whatever scrap paper you've got. But when I put these into my shelf, to my bookshelf now, these little flaps will be here and I can grab it and pull it forward with that little flap so I can take it to my work surface and use the cards. Isn't that cool? These are gonna be great. So this is one idea I have for storing the cards. I have some other ideas I wanna try and I'm thinking I might wanna make, I'm getting some cards to put in so you can see how these look with cards in them. I'm thinking I might wanna do some different sizes of these, maybe some five by sevens, um, six by six, to see how all the little cards will just be nice and neat and clean. Super cute. I wish I'd have saved paper on that one too, but you know, when you're making yours, if you want to save paper, do it this way. If you don't, if you have some scraps you want to use, you can make these flaps longer. But this way, when they're in the bookshelf, if they're all stacked nice and tight, I can just grab my just a note cards. I can just grab my thank you cards and go with it. So there you go. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. If you make one of these, I want to see it. I want to see what you guys do whenever you try the projects that I show you on the channel. There's a couple of ways to share it with me. One is our Facebook group called May May Made It and So Did I. This is a place where you can show us the things you're making that I have inspired you to make, and I love to see them. And the second place is on our customer gallery. That's on our um, .com. That's MayMayMadeIt.com. In the menu section, you'll see more. If you'll hover over more, our customer gallery will pop up, and there's lots of inspiration for you guys there as well. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. See you again real soon. Bye-bye.